good morning to everybody. Beautiful morning, beautiful morning. Come down here in my hammock behind the house, make a little video. I uh, watch other people's videos quite a bit. I learn from them. And I see things like, hmm, maybe I ought not to do that, but uh, everybody has opinions, okay? But what I want to share with you this morning is um, I've been 55 years now shooting muzzleloaders. I got a lot of do's and don'ts. Uh, what I want to share with you today was some of my don'ts. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm probably quite fortunate that uh, I still got all of these. Still got these. You know, <clears throat> when I got into black powder, there, there was no internet. There was no go-to source, you know, to learn about this stuff. What you've seen on the TV or the movies or whatever, that was about, you know, the information you had. Well, there's a company up in uh, Tennessee. It was called uh, Dixie Gunworks. They're still there. Good company, good company. And uh, I had gotten a catalog from them. I think I was about 13 when I started getting interested in them. And, and uh, they had a pistol kit in there. It was a 41 caliber smooth bore pistol with a 10, it was a 10 inch barrel. And the kit was like $28, you know? Man, I I worked around, done mowed some yards, done a few things for my neighbors, my aunts and uncles, and saved up my money and uh, ordered it. Well, you know, it come in, it was a barrel, had a lock, trigger guard, a trigger, and a piece of wood. It was a piece of wood. It wasn't no nothing like they got today. And it come with some instructions. Well, I didn't read so good back then. Don't read so good today, but I read better now than I did then. So all I did was look at the pictures. Yeah, hell, yeah, that's all I needed. And I commenced to working on it and working on it and uh, put the pistol together. So then, I had to find some powder, uh, some balls, and uh, some caps. We had an Army-Navy surplus here in town. It was called uh, Sarge's. So we went up there, me and my mama went up there, and uh, I got me a pound of powder, some caps, and he had some uh, uh, balls for the 36 caliber uh, you know, revolver, cap and ball revolver. And he said those would fit it good, so that's what I got. And in, uh, in that Dixie catalog, he had it laid out where a 45 long coat, 45 ACP, a 38 special, uh, 30 alt 6, 30 30. And he had, you could use them for a volume measure for your powder. You know, if you didn't have a, a you know, an adjustable measure. Back then, stuff like that was, uh, it was hard to find. It was hard to find that stuff. So, you know, you made do. Well, I took, and uh, according to what it said in his book, that the 45 long coat level full of powder be, I don't remember, I think it was like 30 grains of powder. I may be wrong, but it was just, it, it, was, it was what I needed for that pistol. My neighbor, he had a he had a 45 long coat, and he gave me an empty casing. And uh, me and my dad walked down there in the hammock back behind his house, which is right over there. And he took a hubcap off an old car that was laying around. And he hung it up on a tree. And I don't know. We backed up about 10 yards, something like that. He says, "All right, load her up. Let's see if you can hit that." Well, I filled that thing up, and he's like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! What are you doing?" I said, "Well." I get my charge that in he says no 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 I took them things apart they don't have but about that much powder in them daddy didn't know the difference between smokeless powder and black powder of course I didn't either so he had me put about that much powder in it I loaded it up took real good aim at it and I shot pow well by the time I went pow my daddy grabbed his belly like that and laid his hand down he handed me my ball back he says go ahead use the whole thing that ain't enough powder 
it bounced off the tree, came right back, hit him in the belly, and he caught it. Well, that was the first uh, episode of Don't Do That No More. Well, I went crazy. Man, I was shooting that thing every day. I'd get home from school. I'd run down to the swamp down there, and I'd shoot and shoot and shoot and have a good time with it, you know, having a ball with it. And uh, I went down there one afternoon, and I don't know, I think I shot it about two or three times, and all of a sudden, that last shot, man, right between my eyes right there was burning. I mean, burning bad. I'm like, what in the heck, you know? And uh, I run my finger across it, and there was something that cut my, I could feel it, you know, it was sharp, cut, it stuck in my, right there in between my eyes. And about that time, the blood starts dripping, running down my nose, and dripping off my nose pretty good. Uh, I better go to the house. And, uh, cause I couldn't get, I tried to pull it out, but I couldn't get it out with my finger. So I went up to the house and my mother's mama, my grandma, my nana, we called her nana. She about had a duck fit. I walked in there, <laughs> blood running off, dripping off my face. And, what happened? I said, well, I shot my, oh, you shot yourself. No, I didn't shoot myself. I don't know what it is. So she went and got a pair of tweezers and she grabbed the whole of it, pulled it out. Well, it was the whole side of a per percussion cap. You know, it exploded. Luckily, it went between them and not in them. So, I said, well, I don't think this is quite what's supposed to happen. So, I got them instructions out, and I'm looking at them and looking at them. And, and I, I had, it had, it had, it was a hand drawn, but it was good detail. And I'm looking at it, and I look at the hammer. Well, the hammer's got a recess in it. I look at my hammer. It's flat. Well, you know, I'm like, uh, well, maybe that's what that hole's for. <laughs> you know, to keep the cap from blowing up. So, um, I took the hammer off of it and got a drill and drilled me a hole in it and went back to the swamp I went. Well, now, when I popped the cap, because I had got to thinking about it after I did it, there was never a cap on my nipple after I'd shoot. It just gone. Well, that's when I learned about why a hammer's recessed. Okay. <coughs> That pistol, uh, <clears throat> shot it for many years, had a good time with it. We used to take it and uh, I'd put 40 grains of powder in it, stuff some rags down in it, and I'd fill it up with 22 caliber lead pellets, all the way about an inch from the end of the barrel. It was a 10 inch barrel. I'd put a piece of cloth wadding on that, and old dogs, we go a lot of times at night, on the weekends we go, you know, coon hunting, armadillo hunting, things like that. And when the dogs would run the armadillo down the hole, take that old pistol I just stick it up in the hole and touch her off it's pretty devastating uh, I don't it's kind of stupid what we were doing but you know we didn't know no better and you know it's just got watching these videos got me to thinking you know I see a lot of these younger guys that are just getting into traditional muscle loading making a lot of the same mistakes that I did as a young man too and you know uh, y'all got a whole lot more information than I had, so I really advise that if you want to get into the sport, which is a great sport, I love it, uh, do your research and educate yourself and learn more and more about it. You know, later on, I got 18 and, you know, was working after school and I bought me a, um, a 45 caliber rifle Dixie had. It was a made by uh, Hopkins and Allen's, it was an under hammer. You know, the hammer pulled down your trigger guard with your main spring for your hammer. It was, and it said it was a 45 caliber. Okay, so I, I got his family some 445 balls. That old work. Well, you couldn't put a patch around them and get them down the barrel. Couldn't get them around the barrel unless you tapped them in with a hammer, and got them cut into the rifling, and then fought that thing down there and again I didn't know to research it and see what size ball that rifle actually took the um, it shot that ball I'm pretty sure it was sealed because like I said I literally had to beat it in the barrel but uh, later on I found out that uh, that 45 caliber took a 433 three round ball not a four four five well when i got the right size bullet in it put a patch around the ball floated up shot good 
killed several deer with that gun. Then it started giving me a problem. It started um, hang charging. When I, you know, when I'd be hunting, a deer come out and I'd, it'd go, pow, boom. Well, I'd miss, you know. I missed three or four deer with it. I'm like, man, what the heck is wrong with this thing? And uh, I guess I'd found an article about it in the in the uh, Black Powder magazine that I'd come across. And it talked about when you washed your guns out, when you got through, you know, use hot water so it evaporates, but there's always going to be a little bit left. But see, when you got through washing your gun out, turn it upside down and let it sit for a couple of hours, let all that moisture run out. Because what was happening, I just stand it up. Moisture was going to the bottom. Well, that underhammer, the nipple went straight into the barrel and a little bit of water get in it. You know, we all know what water and black powder does. But anyhow, that's, that problem was solved. But uh, prior to that, <laughs> this is a don't. You don't take a muzzle loading pistol on an airline. I found that out the hard way. I think I was, I believe I was 16. And that summer, my mother had got a hold of her nephew up north, who was a uh, drywall finisher. And, and he invited me to come up and work the summer, live with him, work the summer, and he teach, you know, get me started teaching me a trade. I'm like, That's okay. Man's got to learn a trade, you know. And I asked him, I said, you got anywhere to shoot? And he said, well, no. He said, but I got a cabin up in the, up in the mountains, and uh, we, we'll go up there two or three times while you're here. We can shoot up there. I said, okay, well, I'm going to bring, you know, one of my pistols I made, okay? Well, I had made a, a 50 caliber, you know, Kentucky pistol, you know. We're all familiar with them. So uh, I called, I called, or I had my mother do it. She called the airline. So how do you bring a gun on the plane? Well, at this time, about uh, every third flight that left out of Tampa got diverted to Cuba. They was hijacking them planes one right after the other, one right after the other. And uh, you know. The airlines are trying to figure out how to do this. You didn't have the wands that they run over you, and they didn't, you know, you know what I mean, x-ray your luggage. So she called and says, you know, my son's going to fly on your plane, and he wants to take one of his pistols with him for where he's going. I said, okay. Well, how does he do it? She says, well, have him disassemble it, put it in a plain brown paper bag, and when you go to check in, for, you know, get your ticket on the flight, give it to the lady and tell her, you know, what it is, it, you know, that it's a disassembled gun that you want to take with you. So we did. I took it all apart, put it in a bag, got my ticket, reached up there, clunked, laid it up on her desk, and I said, I want to take that with me. They told me to give it to you to go on the plane. The, the lady opens up the bag, looks up at me, she shuts the bag. Unbeknownst to me, she's pushing the button. Here comes two big old sky marshal. Man, one grabs this arm, one grabs this arm, the other grabs up a pistol, and away we go. They take me to the bathroom, down to the men's room. I'm 16, I don't know what's going on. Well, they open up the bag, and the one guy's looking at it, and he says, oh my God, he's got a sawed-off shotgun. And he's looking at it, and he's trying to put it together, you know, and see what is it. But, you know, he thinks it's a sawed-off shotgun. The barrel's solid, you know, it's only 10 inches long, got a pistol grip. He's all excited. And he's looking at it, and he's like, how the hell do you, and he, how do you get the shell in it? And I said, well, you don't. I said, you pour the powder down the barrel and put a piece of cloth around the ball and take this stick right here, and you shove it down the barrel, and you put a cap on that. Well, I ain't never heard of such as that. You, What, what are you trying to pull, boy? I said, I'm I'm trying to explain to you, it's a black powder, muzzle loading pistol. So, they said, well, we're going to leave this up to the pilot. All right. So they kept me in the bathroom, and about 15, 20 minutes later, the pilot walks in. He said, what, what do y'all got? I heard y'all got a problem in here. He says, yeah, he said, this, this kid won't take a sawed-off shotgun on the airplane. What? He said, yeah, look at that damn thing. And the guy looks at it, and he just says, starts shaking his head. He says, that ain't a shotgun, that's a muzzle-loading pistol. Well, that's what he said. Well, he said, no, he said, he, he, he said, I, no, that, that ain't, he said, that, no problem. I, he said, I, I, I'm, I'm not worried about him hijacking my plane with that. And he looked at me, he says, now, you don't have no powder, do you? I said, no, they told me I couldn't bring my gunpowder. I said, 
No, I have no gunpowder. Okay. So anyhow, he tells me, he says, all right, I'll take it up in the cockpit with me. When we land and you get off, I'll give it to you. All right. Well, he did. And as he hands it to me after we land uh, up there in New York City. And he says, now you do know you can't have a pistol in New York City. He said, so I don't know how you're going to get home with this thing. He said, because if you do what you did in Tampa up here, he says, you ain't never going back to Tampa. <laughs> okay. So anyway, before I left, I sold it to a man who lived across the street from my cousin. He hung, it's probably still hanging on his mantle now. But anyhow, that's definitely a don't. But you know, where I'm going with this is um, the information is out there now everywhere. Plenty of videos, you know, there's all kinds of information, plenty of forms. And if you want to get into this sport, do your research and learn. Uh, I got lucky. Like I said, I still got all these and I still got these. Because I'm going to tell you what, this old, this old cracker, I done some stupid shit with a muzzleloader when I was coming up. Now when I think back on it. And I, sometimes I slip and I still do it, but uh, that's here and there, I guess. But all right, now think about what I said. You know, anybody that wants to get into this, uh, you know, traditional muzzleloader, let them watch my video, you know, because um, like I said, I see, I see a lot of things going on on, on the internet that are not correct. Um, I'm not gonna see nobody get hurt. Uh, nobody needs to get hurt doing this because it, it's a fun sport. All right, this old Florida cracker. Hope you enjoyed the video and leave some comments and put it out there. Let you let you let your friends see it. Maybe I'll get me some more subscribers. I'll see you on the next one.